True Detective returns in full force this winter, starring Jodie Foster and Callie Reese in lead roles. Honestly, the combo of a traumatized female detective and a small, cold town is always a great combination. For example, look at Mayor of Easttown. There's a lot to unpack here. We're taking a trip to Alaska, to Innis, where a research station for climate change and other scientific research was left abandoned out of the blue by the group of men working there. Six years ago, the icy town saw the gruesome murder of an indigenous woman whose tongue was cut out and whose body was left at the edge of the village for everyone to gawk at. State Trooper Angie Navarro, who found the body back then, believes there's a connection between the missing person case today and that woman's murder. Will Danvers cave in and work with Navarro, or will she choose a different path? Let's find out with True Detective Season 4, Episode 1. On December 17th, the sun set for the last time in the year in Ennis. A man from the Inupiaq community is on a hunting spree, but as the sun sets, something shifts, and they eerily all jump off into the horizon. I suppose this signifies an eerie paranormal presence in Ennis, or it's just to signify a bad omen. The show starts with a quote by Hildred Castain that implies that the darkness will bring some terrible beast to the town. The supply man visits Tsalil, an Arctic research station, to deliver some goodies for the scientists. To his surprise, no one's in there, and he discovers a severed tongue on the floor by chance before leaving. Chief Liz Danvers is immediately called to the scene along with Hank Pryor and his son Peter, we can call them her sidekicks. When they reached the lab, they found out that everybody had disappeared into thin air, leaving behind their personal belongings and communication equipment. Hank believed that the scientists had probably gone on some geek expedition, but Liz knew that the matter was not as simple as that. Liz discovers that the men have been missing for at least a couple of days, so they must hurry up to figure out what's happened. There were eight scientists from all around the world in this facility, and they had been working there for 18 years. When it came time to look at the tongue, Liz noticed some intricate details suggesting it belonged to an Anupiak woman. But what was most unsettling was a message written on the whiteboard that said, We are all dead. Liz knew that the scientists had voluntarily done whatever they did and knew what the outcome was. Liz's intuition was telling her that the entire incident could have something to do with a cold case from the past, but she was in denial until Agent Navarro came and explicitly asked her about it. Liz, however, refused to share any details of the ongoing case, and therefore, Navarro furiously walked out of the precinct. The Tsalil scientists undertook a lot of research projects, ranging from climate change to finding the origins of life, and the authorities never imagined that something suspicious would be happening there. The police officers had no clue what they were in for or what discovery they would make at the very next moment. There seems to be something suspicious about Hank, who has some old files tucked away in his home and won't share them with Liz. She gets Peter to go digging for her, and he, like a good boy, brings them to her. Liz tells Peter about how a woman named in Masu Kautok was found at the edge of the village with 32 stab wounds from a sharp, unidentified object in the shape of a star. Apparently, and was an indigenous woman who was an activist and was against the mine in Ennis. Her brother Ryan had warned her that if she protested against the mine, it would mean the end of Ennis because it is the biggest source of livelihood there. However, she wouldn't stop running her mouth. Ryan believes that's what got her killed, especially with her tongue cut out brutally. Angie was on that case but never closed it. She wants Liz to get to the bottom of it. Of course, she also believes that if it were a white woman, the case would have been solved much earlier. It was a sheer act of hatred. Considering her tongue was missing, there is a huge possibility that this might be an act of revenge. On the other hand, we learn that Liz is actually a stepmom, and her stepdaughter Leah gets caught making a sex tape with a 16-year-old. When she goes to pick her up, they almost meet with an accident, but it's a drunk woman named Stacy, who is notorious for drunk driving for no reason. We never know what time it is in Ennis since it's permanently night. It seems Liz has a traumatic experience from her past that she isn't willing to talk about, which has something to do with Leah's dead father. This was also a drunk driving incident, so she's extra sensitive to this situation. Navarro always felt very strongly for the cause of the women who were abused, and moreover, she knew that indigenous people had to deal with a lot of racism, which frustrated her because nobody spoke about it. A woman named Rose Aguino sees a man who is absolutely not dressed for the cold outside her home. She calls this man Travis, and he doesn't say a word, he only shows himself to her. It's not far-fetched to assume he's a ghost, and we learn he's dead later on. But Travis guides Rose, who we can assume was his mother, possibly out into the snow, does some dance moves, and points in a direction. 
When Rose arrives there, she finds three of the men, dead with their heads sticking out of the frozen snow. It also appears as if they don't really have any clothes on. Elsewhere, Navarro is met with a polar bear while driving off to the scientific facility, another possible sign. Both Danvers and Navarro end up at the facility, knowing there'll be some more clues. Danvers, in the meantime, has gone back through its files and discovered that she was found wearing the same parka as a man named Raymond Clark, one of the scientists. This can indicate that the two were possibly seeing each other and might have fallen out. But this is also a clear indication that there is some sort of connection between Anne's death and Sable. In the present time, Navarro also met with Annie's brother to check on what he had been up to and what he had been doing all this time. She was later called by her colleague to Jules' house, who was probably her sister, as the latter had gotten another anxiety attack. Jules told Navarro that she didn't want to end up like her mother and that she was trying very hard each and every day to bring the situation under control. We were not told a lot about Navarro's past in the first episode, but it was quite evident that there were many aspects that she didn't talk about and that she didn't exactly have a very happy childhood. At the beginning of the episode, we get a brief scene in the research facility where a man is making a ham sandwich in front of his phone, presumably making some content for the internet. When he's about to present his finished sandwich to the camera, he notices his friend Clark convulsing. Worried, he calls out to him, and when the convulsions stop, Clark says, she's awake. The lights go out, and we move on to two days later when the supply man finds the empty facility. This phrase is littered throughout the show. Navarro hears it when she almost hits the polar bear, and Danvers hears it in her sleep, from whom we can assume is the ghost of her dead son, Holden. We could also imagine that the comment simply implies that darkness is here and something terrible is about to occur. Liz keeps making remarks about the spiritual nature of Angie's beliefs, which could be why we see the animals act strangely in the show. Whatever it is, this horror mystery is definitely making for the perfect January watch, and we can't wait to see what Liz will discover next. Liz got a call from Peter, who told her that a woman named Rose had found something on the ice. She told Navarro that it was Travis who showed her the way, but the latter knew that he had died years ago. This entire incident made me realize that probably some otherworldly things were happening in the ice-capped Alaskan terrain, and probably Liz might have to figure out a lot of things in the subsequent episodes. When Liz and other police officers arrived at the scene, they found the dead bodies of the scientists half-buried in the ice. It felt like the scientists had taken their own lives, or maybe someone had sedated them and left them in the wilderness to die. Throughout episode 1, we heard a voice whispering the words, she's awake, which in a very literal sense could mean that Annie's spirit has come back from the dead to take revenge on her perpetrators. Or it could be possible that someone very close to Annie was taking revenge for her death and making it look like a supernatural phenomenon so as to deceive the cops. In the upcoming episodes, we will get to know what exactly happened at the lab and if it had something to do with Annie's case.